Welcome back to Learning Data Science on the Ethereum Blockchain with Omni Analytics. In the last video, we learned about reading Excel and CSV files with R. In this video, we will be learning about R basics. All the files used in this video will be provided on GitHub. Check out the links in the description box to find out more about our Gitcoin grant and CryptoPunks. Let's get started. First, let's load the CryptoPunks dataset from the previous video. This dataset displays the sales of CryptoPunks since June 23rd, 2017 and ends December 30th, 2020. We use the read.csv command to read the dataset into R. Then we use the names command to see the columns in the dataset. We use the head function to look at the first six rows of the dataset. The results are below. R is a programming language that allows some computations. You can complete addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, integer division, modulo operator, which gives the remainder of a division, powers, exponentiation, logarithms, and trigonometric functions. You may recall in a previous video, we learned about creating variables. Variables are created using the assignment operator. This consists of the less than sign and the minus sign. We can then perform any of the functions on the variables. We can calculate logarithms, squares, and square roots. There are a few rules for variable creation. Variable names cannot start with a number. Variables in R are case sensitive. Some common letters are used internally by R and should be avoided as variable names. These include lowercase c, q, and t, and uppercase c, d, f, t, and i. There are reserved words that R won't let you use for variable names. These include for, in, while, if, else, repeat, break, and next. R will let you use the name of a predefined function, but try not to overwrite these. In R, a variable doesn't need to be a single value. We can create a vector using the combine function. Let's create a variable called y with the top five highest sales in Ethereum. Operations will then be done element-wise. For example, we can divide the vector by 5. This is the result. Sometimes we need to get help. We will talk much more about vectors later. But for now, let's talk about a couple of ways to get help. The primary function to use is the help function. Just pass in the name of the function you need help with. Let's try help head. The question mark function also works. Sometimes Googling for help can be a little difficult, but if you use R plus CRAN plus your query, you can get good results. Another helpful tool is the R reference card. You can download the R reference card from the following website. Having this open or printed off near you while working is helpful until you master the basics. Now it's your turn. Using the R reference card or the help pages, do the following. Find out how many rows and columns the CryptoPunks dataset has using at least two methods. Create a vector with the top five sales in Ethereum. Here are the answers for you to look at. Let's talk about a few more useful functions. There are a whole variety of useful functions to operate on vectors. A couple of the more common ones are length, which returns the length or number of elements of a vector, and sum, which adds up all the elements of a vector. Now let's have an introduction to data frames. Punks is a data frame. Data frames hold data sets. Not every column needs to be the same type, like an Excel spreadsheet. Each column in a data frame is a vector. So each column needs to have values that are all the same type. We can access different columns using the dollar sign operator. In the previous slide, we have seen that we can create a vector using the C command or the rep function. We can also use the colon operator if we wish to create consecutive values. We can extract the specific elements of the vector as follows. 
We just access the individual elements of the vector, but indexing is a lot more powerful than that. We can use head to get the first six rows of the type column. Then we can use the C function to get the first, third, and fifth rows in the type column. Finally, we can use the colon operator to find the first through sixth rows in the type column. Logical statements. R has built-in support for logical statements. True and false are built in T for true and F for false. These are supported but cannot be modified. Logical statements can result from a comparison using greater than and less than, greater than and equal to, less than and equal to, double equals and exclamation point and equal sign. The last two mean equals and not equals. Let's try indexing with logical statements. We can index vectors using logical statements as well. If we define a variable called x that has slots between 1 and 5, which pulls the total point for the first 5 players, and then we use a logical statement which says that x is greater than 3, this will return which of the first 5 slots are greater than 3. And if we use this statement, this will return which of the first 5 slots is less than 3. In this example, we gather the ID of alien type punk. First, we create a variable alien ID, the ID of punks that are alien type. Then we look at the structure of alien ID. We see which IDs are less than 5,000 to find certain punks which are labeled little. Now we have a variable named little with five punks that are less than 5,000. The following code locates the punks IDs that correspond to those slots. Now let's look at element-wise logical operator. These are element-wise and and element-wise or. The element-wise and operator works by going through each of the vectors and checking to see if the first element is true and the second one is true. If this is correct, the result is true. If both are false, the result is also false. However, if one is false and one is true, then the operator returns false. Check the example below. The element-wise OR operator works by going through each element and checking to see if the first element is true and true. If this is correct, then the result will be true. If the next element is true, and false, the result will also be true. Only if both elements are false does the OR operator return false. Your turn. When was punk 9976 last sold? Note, there are many ways to answer this. Some are faster than others. Find out the number of sales in the punk's data. And for those who want a challenge, among all the sales, how many of the sales are more than or equal to one Ethereum? Hint, you will need to use part two. Here are the answers for you to look at. Modifying vectors. We can modify vectors using indexing as well. Here we create a new data frame that consists of the first five columns of the punks dataset. We can replace all the claimed with free by using the following code. There are a few different data types in R. Let's have a look at a few. You can use mode or class to find information about variables. Structure is useful to find information about the structure of your data. There are many data types, but numeric, integer, character, date, and factor are most common. Elements of a vector must all be the same type. For example, if we look at claims, these are all logical statements. However, if we replace the false statement with a frowny face, as shown below, the new structure says that we have 
characters instead of logical types. We can convert between different types using the as series of functions. First, let's create a vector called IDs, which is the head of the punks ID column. Using the as function, we can change the characters. Using the as.character function changes the IDs to characters. Now we can reverse the change by using the as.numeric function to change them back to numeric. Notice that in one instance, there are quotation marks and the other, there are not. IDs is being converted from a numeric type to a character, while two in quotation marks is a character being converted to a numeric type. Let's have a look at statistical functions. Using the basic functions we have learned, it would not be difficult to compute some basic statistics. Let's first create a variable called n that is the number of elements in slots. 17,554. Now let's calculate the mean of slots. We can also calculate the standard deviation. These are both fairly easy. That's if you remember the formulae. However, thankfully, R has built-in statistical functions. We don't need to memorize the formula. R does the work for us. We just need to type mean and input our variable. So the mean of slots, the standard deviation of slot, the summary, and the quantile. We can also create conditions. Which punk has sold for more than 20 Ethereum and has one slot? The following code answers that question. Only five punks satisfy these conditions. Your turn. Determine which punk has sold for more than 100 Ethereum or has seven slots. Which punk was sold first? Punk 1111 or punk 3773? Here are the answers for you to look at. Thanks for sticking around with us and learning about our basics. In the next video, we'll be going over data structures. See you in the next one.